So now what I'd like to do is get into talking about cutting corners. And no, I don't mean taking the easy route. I mean literally cutting corners. So I'm going to, I unbolted my blade. I'm going to feed it through this pilot hole that I've pre-drilled. And we're going to talk about cutting corners. So one of the most important skills that you will need to learn on your scroll saw is actually stopping the blade from cutting. I know that might sound backwards because the whole point of a scroll saw is to cut things, but in order to make these tight corners, you need to know how to slow down that blade so that it doesn't overcut. So what I'm going to do, and I'm going to make it a little bit exaggerated so that you can see, is overcut the corners of this square. So here we go. I'm going to turn up my speed. My tension is good. Maybe a little, little more tense. There we go. I'm going to get started here. So when you try to cut very fast, and a lot of people think that to cut corners, you need to be going fast. They'll go to the corner and say, oh, let me just spin. So what you'll see when you get to that turn, if you don't stop your blade, is you're going to curve all of those corners. So again, curve, you don't have, and I'm going to cut it all the way up so I can show it to you. When you look at it here, Let's see, you can see how those are curved. That's not a sharp turn. So in order to get those sharp turns, what you need to do is stop the blade. Okay, so now I'm going to show you how to cut the corners by stopping your blade from cutting. So I'm going to go ahead and cut into the square and find my straight line. Okay, there we go. I'm on my line. I'm cutting into a corner. And instead of trying to go quickly through that turn, I'm going to slow my blade down, literally stop it from cutting. I'm not pushing it through at all. And I'm going to turn my work and continue down. So I'll do that again and explain it as I go. You come into the corner, you're not going to speed up. You are going to stop applying pressure as soon as you get to that corner, brace your work, turn it, and continue to cut. Again, you're coming to the corner, you stop pushing the wood or material, you spin it, and you continue on the line. So by stopping the blade from cutting, you're able to get a tight corner. So as you can see here in this example, where I stopped the blade, the corners are still sharp. Versus the one where I tried to go fast around the corners, where there's, those have more of a curve. So now that I've shown you how to do those corners, what I recommend doing on this practice sheet is going through these corners here because it will let you practice the stop and start over and over again. The next shape that I'm going to get into here is a triangle. There are many ways to cut corners. So I'm going to show you several different ways um, that you can do that. The first one is what I just showed you. It's simply going into your corner, stopping the blade from cutting once you get to the corner, turning your work and continuing down the line. So let's do that one first. So I'm going to go ahead and cut into this first corner. So here we go. I get on my line. When I get to that corner, I slow down. I stop pushing. I turn my work and continue up that line. Okay, so that's the first way that you can cut a corner. If it's not a tight corner, that's the best way to do it because you're simply continuing on with your work. So the next way to cut a corner, if it's a really tight corner like these ones within the star, what you'll want to do is one of the two out and back methods. So I'm going to show you the first one now. What you'll want to do is cut in to one side. So I'm going to get on my line and cut all the way to the tip. Now, what I'm going to do is with the blade still moving, I'm going to back out of that corner. So I'm going to pull the material towards me and go back up the line that I just cut. Now that I've backed out of the work, what I'm going to do is go back in, but from the other side. So 
you can see there, especially from the off cut, that that makes a really nice tight corner. So I'm just going to show you that same method again. Cut in on the first side to the point, then you back out, and you can come in from the other side to create that very sharp corner. So if you're cutting out something like lettering, the letter M, the letter W, those have really sharp corners. That's a great method to use. Another way to do the sharp corners is to turn your work around. So I'll show you what I mean by that. I'm going to cut into that corner again. And rather than cutting into my work, I'm simply going to back the blade out and then I'm going to turn it around and I'm going to pull the work towards me going back through the line that I just cut and I'm going to turn the blade and cut up the other side. You'll see here that I actually did not stay on the line and I'm going to show you a quick method on how to correct that. So let me do that corner again for you so you can see that and then we'll move on to fixing our mistakes. So I'm going to go right into that tight corner, come out, spin my work around, and then come up the other side. So there we go. Those are several methods that you can use to do those tough interior cuts. So again, I just mentioned that I didn't exactly stay perfectly on the line there, and I'm going to go through quickly now on how you can fix those corners. So I'm gonna purposely go off the line here. I'm gonna cut the outside of this triangle. Okay, so I'm gonna set up my line, okay, I'm cutting great, and oh, achoo! I see, and I went off the line. Rather than saying, oh my gosh, you know, this is messed up, I can't do it anymore, what you can simply do, start your blade, and then pull the work towards you back through that leg track, the trace that you just cut, and continue cutting. So again, that's what I call backtracking, because you're literally going back to save that corner. When I come into the corner, I'm slowing down, not applying any pressure, and I'm gonna make that nice, smooth turn to come up to the top. I'll show you this top corner as well. The best way to do this is, if you can, stop your blade and turn it and cut it down. Um, what I'm gonna do now is actually show you a way to do the outside corners um, so that they're sharp, like I just showed you those inside. So if you're not confident making, if you're not confident making this sharp turn at the top of a triangle, you don't necessarily have to do that. What you can do is cut through it. So you're gonna cut all the way to the peak. Okay, you hit the top and you're gonna overcut it. Then you're simply going to do a small little loop around the top and continue cutting down the other side. So obviously I didn't stay on the line there, but you get the general idea. Um, I'll do it again on this corner so you can see it again. So I'm going to try to stay on my line as much as possible. I'm going to cut into the edge, overcut it, do a nice spin around, and then come back and continue cutting along the line. There. So you can see it makes a nice sharp outside cut if you're not confident in making that turn without cutting around yet. All right, so you can see there is a lot of practicing to be done and a lot of adjustments to the blades, the tension and the speed in order to get comfortable. The reason why this practice sheet is so beneficial to you is because it allows you to practice all types of different cuts before you start trying to cut your first project. So again, if you'd like this practice sheet, shoot me a message and I'll send it over. So now that we have done these practice cuts, or most of them, we can move on to a bigger project. So let's get started.